Hey boys and girls, happy weekend. I hope you are doing fantastic. I have Dale here with me today, which is super exciting. What's up guys? I got lots of messages saying, hey, Dale should do it with you again. And so here he is. Hi. This should go well. <laughs> it's uh, always worth a laugh, that's for sure. Yeah. 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 You can't control me on video. I'm gonna do whatever I want. Or not. <laughs> All right, so we actually have a really cool story to tell you guys about what we did this week. Yeah. And I'm gonna let Dale tell it. Okay, I'm gonna tell it. So, we found, uh, I found a baby bunny yeah, baby at baby. work. Like, itty bitty baby bunny, fit in your palm of your hand. So, we had the bay door open, the big garage door open at work, and he just started hopping in there. We didn't know where he came from. So, we grabbed him, and I just set him outside on the grass, and he just kind of, stayed there he didn't do anything and all day went by and at the end of the day i went to go see if he was still there and he was but he was kind of cold and i was like oh man he's gonna freeze tonight so i called up Paige and was like hey we should take this little guy home. and we did yeah so we went and we picked him up because he was in the mud like the cold mud and so we figured out where he was i went and grabbed him really quick we put him in the kennel the cat kennel just so we could take him home safely and we got him home and we set him up in a nice box with a heated blanket some snacks and some water just to try to take some good care of him but we kind of realized that we were in over our head <laughs> <laughs> bunnies we were, are not easy bunnies especially like this i'm not telling you guys like this is a cute little bit bunny that you can have as a pet this is the bunnies you see outside that are running around in the fields so we were not equipped to take care of this bunny. And no. it was just a baby, which was fine. And we're like, you know what? We're gonna call one of the rescues in Saskatoon here and we're gonna take them there so he has a good life and a happy life. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we did. So Living Skies Rehabilitation Center and we took him there and he was all cozy. Paige was holding him in the car as we were driving. And the people that we brought him to was like super cool. They had, I think, what was it, 31 bunnies? Or was they it 21? They had 21 bunnies. 21 bunnies right now. Itty bitty baby bunnies because it's spring and bunnies be multiplying. So yeah, we took him there and if, I guess he like feeds bunnies for eight hours a day. Yeah, he was super cool. They're awesome to talk to. But yeah, we kept our little bunny just for two nights, just so we knew that he'd make it and survive and that, you know, figure out what the best plan was for him we figured that out and we know that he's gonna be happy so just a fact for you just so you don't think you can pick up a bunny bunnies if you ever see a baby bunny in a field leave it alone don't ever pick it up because the mom leaves it there on purpose we only found out we knew that that bunny was gonna be in trouble just because he'd been by himself for so long already that he wasn't gonna make it the next day so that's why we did what we did it's not something you should do every time you see a baby bunny because baby bunnies are actually, they don't have scent, so other animals can't smell them, just their moms, and their moms will come and feed them throughout the day and keep them safe. So don't do what we did. We did because we did. We did what we did because we knew it was best for the bunny and we knew that the mom wasn't coming back. Yeah. So if you ever come across a little baby bunny or a few baby bunnies or any other animals out in the yard or in the field or at a park or something like that, do not touch it, get an adult and find out what to do through there. Exactly. Yeah. So that was our, I was our week to, this week. We had a fun adventure with a little bunny. The cats did not like it very much because I know you guys are curious. But yeah, we did that and it was super cool, super cool experience. Mm -hmm. It was a little hard to see him leave, but we knew that we were taking him to the best place we could. Yeah, and we learned a lot too. So if we ever actually have to do this again, then we know what to do. We know the and, best plan. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so we're going to go into a time of worship. So stand up or sit down, do what you feel like. We're going to go into some worship. You are 
Father, I just thank you for this day and thank you for this group of kids that is tuned in today to learn about you. Uh, I just thank you that we have the opportunity to do this, that uh, we are in a place in the world that we have this connectivity so we can share the love of you and your word with people around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, you guys. So I'm going to ask Dale a few questions. Feel free to answer them at home, or you can email me your answers. My email will pop up down here, or it'll pop up later. It always pops up at some point. So, Dale, yes. I'm going to ask you some food questions. Okay. What is your favorite meal? Oh, yeah. I was supposed to premeditate this answer. Um, you know what? My I'm going to say two answers. Is that, that cool? Yeah. Okay. So, hot dogs. Oh. Cooked or raw, ketchup, bun, or without, it don't matter. I can eat hot dogs all day. My second favorite is got to be a peanut butter and jam sandwich. Just because they're timeless. They're the best food. And maybe a steak. A steak could be third. That's three. You said two. Okay, well, now I'm saying three. <sighs> Easy. And just to go off the hot dog thing. We seriously always have a gazillion packs of hot dogs in the house, and Dale just munches on them like chips. It's really weird. Yeah, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, so what's your favorite fast food place? Definitely. Oh, actually, it, it's a toss-up between Tim Hortons and McDonald's. All right, what's your favorite thing to order from both? Okay, from Tim Hortons, it's got to be the Farmer Sausage Grilled Wrap. Yeah, that's, I kind of want one now. McDonald's? Uh, McDonald's, uh, the double Big Mac right. combo. Coke, no ice. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is your favorite restaurant? Manos. What's your favorite thing to get there? Uh, the New York eight ounce steak. Yeah, that is the best steak hands down that I've ever had. All right. Uh, two more. What is your favorite breakfast? Uh, breakfast food. Breakfast food. Uh, fast food? No. Okay. Breakfast food at home. Probably just plain old cereal. You know, it doesn't really matter what kind. Cheerios, mini wheats, honeycombs. Yeah, that's about it. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. And last but not least, what is your favorite flavor of ice cream? Oh, pistachio. Definitely pistachio. Pistachio? Same with the pudding. So, Dale, are you feeling hungry right now? I'm always hungry. <laughs> After talking about all that food, you kind of get pretty hungry, hey? Yeah. 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 I'm always hungry. Yeah. Can we, do we still have hot dogs? I don't know. Okay, well, I'm gonna go check after this. <laughs> <laughs> so today in our story, we're actually gonna talk about how Jesus supplies food for some hungry people, which is super cool. Because it's not just like three, four, five people. We're talking a lot of people. But I don't want to ruin it for you. Dale almost did. Yeah. But this leads us to our big idea today. Which is... <laughs> Jesus will provide our needs. Which is an awesome, awesome lesson to learn because Jesus provides for us. He gives us what we need and sometimes even more than what we need. Oh, yeah. And we're going to see that in this story today. Sound good? Sounds good. Awesome. Dale, I have one more question for you. Yes, sir. How do you feel when you've gone all day without eating? Mm, I don't know. I don't know when the last time that's ever been, but I know how I felt from breakfast to lunch when I didn't have breakfast this morning I, I didn't feel great you know tell me it was a rumbling uh, I get a headache sometimes yeah I don't I don't feel awesome yeah I know I like my food <laughs> I know <lots> especially <laughs> anyway you know what <laughs> I know for myself, if I don't eat uh, for a certain lot for a long time, or if I don't eat all day, I get super angry or hangry. I get super grumpy, super grouchy, and I'm super frustrated all the time. Scary. So, what about you? What do you get like when you get when you're hungry? Talk about it with the people around you. How do you act when you get hungry? Ask your mom. Ask your dad.
Yeah, ask people how you get when you're hungry. You learn a lot. Because I've asked Dale, I'm like, what am I like when I'm hungry? And he's like, you're angry. (laughs) We're actually going to go into our story now. We're going to get our Bibles, so go get yours. There we go. We've got our Bibles. I hope you got yours. And today we are going to Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. Just in case you don't know how to find it in your Bible, what you're going to do is find the book of the ba- book of the Bible called Matthew. You'll go to chapter 14, so that's the big number, and then you will find the little number 13. All right. All right. So, open that up in your Bible and Dale's going to read for us today. All right. So, this story is called Jesus feeds 5,000. All right. <clears throat> 13. As soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. But the crowds heard where he was headed and followed on foot from many towns. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them, and he healed their sick. That evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, that isn't necessary. You feed them. But we only have five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here, he said. Then he told them, or then he told the people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish. He looked upward toward heaven and bless them. Then, breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples, who distributed them to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted, and afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 men were fed that day, in addition to all the women and children. That's a crazy story, hey? Like, we are seeing that not only, not only is Jesus healing people, which he does because he's amazing, but he feeds 5,000 people. And from what? What did he feed them from? Five loaves of bread. So think of a five wonder breads. And then two fishes. Two fish. Fish? Fishes. Fish. (laughs) Two fish. (laughs) That was it. And that was enough to feed 5,000 people and have 12 baskets of leftovers. That's pretty intense, eh? Oh, yeah. Well, I can fill a basket with like five loaves of bread in itself, but they have 12 baskets of leftovers. Yeah. How'd and, that work? Right. Like, how, how could that have happened? I have no idea. Could you have pulled that off? No, I don't have that many tricks up my sleeve. It's, it's, it's empty. <laughs> I know I couldn't have done it. So... What is that then? What is that called, what Jesus did? I know that word. Should I say it? Yes. It's, I think it's called a miracle. It is, and we've been talking about this a lot through these series, are these unbelievable miracles that Jesus does. And what is a miracle, Dale? Something really only God can do. Like, nothing that we could ever produce. Well, not on our own. No. There are times that we can produce miracles th- with God working through us. Very true. But we can't do it without God. And it's something mm-hmm. that only God can do. And that's exactly what happens in this story. Is we see over 5,000 people. Did you guys catch that at the end? It was 5,000 men. And that's not including the women and wives that were there. The children. Like, we could have been looking at 10,000 or more people. And that is so much food. Mm-hmm. So much food that was miraculously made from five loaves of bread and two fish. And if you eat as much as I do, like, that's got to be a lot of food. Right. And that's the other thing. They, they were, they ate and were satisfied. It wasn't like they took a little baby nibble. They ate until they were full and happy and content. And for some men and women too, that can be a lot. Like... It can be, Dale can eat about three packages of hot dogs and still be hungry. So, yeah, I don't know if that's a brag or not, but I can. <laughs> it's amazing to see that God working through his son does this amazing miracle, feeding thousands and thousands of people. And 
out of something so small. And this also teaches us not only that God will provide for us, but that even the smallest amount can do amazing things. Yeah. Whatever you have to bring, it can do amazing things when we give it to God. So if we give our talents to God, we give ourselves to God, as much as it doesn't seem like a lot, he can do amazing things with that. Yeah, he takes what we have and he multiplies it. He does. Yeah. And it's really awesome to see. And it's amazing to talk about because God is super cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to do a quick experiment to show you this thing of multiplying, how what we give to God, he multiplies. So how many corners are on this piece of paper? Four. Awesome. All right. So, Dale, I'm just going to give you, I'm going to share my paper with you. Okay. I like to share. I only get the coins. <laughs> All right. How many? How many are there now? One, two, three, four, five corners. So how could that have happened? That I I gave it away, but now there's more corners. All right. Let's do this again. All right. Here we'll cut a bigger piece off. There you go. Now I have six corners. Oops. That's crazy. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now she has six corners. So now I've went from four corners to six corners. Let's let's just see if it keeps going. Okay. All right, Dale. Okay. How many corners? All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven corners. All right. Let's do it again. All right. What about now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that was from giving away. Like, if if the goal is to have the most corners and it involves sharing to do that, that's pretty cool. Yeah, there's nine corners. And that's exactly how God works, is that whenever we're, we willingly give, whenever we willingly offer ourselves he makes it into something into something better so he gives us more corners or he gives us a stronger talent or he gives us more strength to help out and it's super cool that god does that just by sharing and giving things to god we are the ones who get more we get more corners and more places to learn and to love and to share God's love and grace. And it's really cool how God uses us and uses anything for his will and that he provides our needs. God that day provided all of those people with food when it didn't seem possible. And God does this for us every day. He provides us with food, water, shelter, whatever we need God always helps to provide. And it may look different for some people. And it may look different for others. But the main thing to know is God will provide for you no matter what. He will always be on your side. He will always help you out. Because God provides. He never, never stops. And he will forever love us and be there for us. We just need to be willing to give ourselves to him and share God with those around us. And like, even if you don't think you deserve it, even when you probably don't deserve it, you will always still be there. So. All right. So I'll get Dale to close us off in prayer and then we'll sign off. Okay. Dear Father, I thank you again for this awesome group of kids that came out today to learn more about you. And I just ask that you bless their weeks going forward, bless our weeks, and yeah, just give us strength for another day tomorrow and continue to guide us in your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so we'll let Dale say goodbye first. Bye, guys. Good seeing you. All right. <laughs> All right, guys, as always, I love you, I miss you, and I really hope to see you soon. Bye. Later.